Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, today we're going to follow up with part two of our look at uh, the tools from DCC Concepts. Now, I know I thought, I thought I'd be able to get this out by Wednesday of this week. However, we're still recovering from, you know, Hurricane Helene and things got in the way. So I did manage to get it out on the regular schedule, though, for Friday. But as my granddaddy used to say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So I had good intentions, but things got in the way. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our look at some more tools from DCC Concepts. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Okay, before we get started with our look at the tools, I want to share with you a, a little bit of history. And for those of you that want to skip past this, I will put a timestamp right down here somewhere so you can jump forward to that spot. Now, what is this? Well, basically, this is an old CTC-16 receiver. And this is what we used to use for command control when I first uh, really got started in command control. Now, at the Northern Virginia Model Railroaders in the 19... 80s, I believe it was, we started making these kits up. And these were a circuit board that was designed by Bruce Chubb. And I think on here it says, yes, um, BAC, Bruce A. Chubb, 683. So he designed this board back in 1983. And then we produced the individual circuit boards using the design that, uh, that Chubb provided. I dug these out when I was getting all my stuff ready to sell. And I found this Athern Dummy Calf SW7, and I used to have this receiver inside of this unit. And that's the way it used to be, because these were so big that they had to go inside of a dummy unit in most cases. Now, I did have one of these that I fit inside of a um, train master, an Athern train master, and these would fit in various other dummy locomotives. But that was how they worked. This right here is a Loke Sound decoder, and that'll give you an idea of just how far we've gone as far as shrinking these components, because this entire decoder with sound is about the same size as some of these chips that were used. And I believe these, this is about three quarters of an amp to an amp rating, whereas this one, I think, it could put up, oh, with something like about uh, three quarters of an amp as well, so it didn't have a lot of power. Um, and the way that we, we set the address on these was right here. You can see this uh, dip switch setting. And with various combinations of these four switches, we could set one of 16 different addresses. So that's why it was called CTC16, is that it was centralized traffic control or command control, and it was 16 addresses. Now, over time, they did boost this to CTC80 and things like that by narrowing the wavelength, that kind of thing. But the only thing you could really do with this is control the speed of the locomotive. You didn't have any control over lights, anything else. That's all it was, was you could control your locomotive forward and reverse. And that was it. So that's uh, a little bit of the history. We used to make these in two different formats. We had this long skinny version for hood unit diesels. And then we had a rectangular version that would fit in uh, steam locomotive tenders and the like. So we've come a long way, guys. And uh, this is where we are right now, thank heavens. It makes it so much easier to install command control in your locomotives. OK, let's move on to our look at some of the hand tools that I got from DCC Concepts. OK, the first thing I want to take a look at are some of the cutters uh, that are available from DCC Concepts. And this right here is a fine sprue cutter. So it has a nice little pointy tip on it here, can get into tight spaces. And you can use it with styrene to cut parts from the sprue. So it just goes in and it gives you this nice clean cut right here on the edge for, the, for these parts. So it makes it really quick and easy to get these things separated from the, uh, from the sprue. But you can also use this with brass. And a lot of brass etchings are available now uh, with small parts. And you can clip those out there as well. And these will get right in there, and they give you a nice 
flush cut or go, go ahead and cut it loose from the sprue and you can see right there. You might have to do a little bit of filing or sanding right there to get those little stubs off, but otherwise it is a very nice, close, sharp cut that you'll get with this tool. And let me say, I'm not going to go over each individual uh, part number. I will list the part numbers in the description. And I'll say that again for those people that aren't listening. I will put the part numbers for all of these in the description. So don't ask me what the part number for this is. Go to the description and look it up yourself. Okay, let's move on to another one. And these are all different types of cutters. Now, this right here is their heavy duty track cutter. And it has a very heavy blade, you can see right here. And it is very sharp, nice angle. And all you have to do is put it right there on the uh, piece of rail. And it gives you a nice, clean, sharp cut there. And you can do it either way. It gives you a, a, such a clean cut that you probably won't even need to do any filing there. There's a little bit of a catch on the bottom there, but other than that, there's really not much of a, of a burr left from that cut. So those are a very hardy, very sturdy a tool that's going to last you a long time. And again, all of these things come with their lifetime warranty as long as you don't uh, uh, misuse and abuse them. If you manage to put a ding in the cutting blade because you try to cut something like spring wire or wire that is too heavy for this particular tool, and they list that in the instructions, then they're not going to replace that for you. But if it does just break during normal use, cutting standard nickel silver rail or brass rail or whatever, then they will replace these. This one right here is their heavy duty cutter. They have a standard track cutter as well. So you can see it's got a much longer uh, blade on it, about the same angle and sharpness. And so let's give that a try. Like that, no burr at all. We can do it sideways. A Little bit of a burr on the bottom, a little bit of burr there. So probably better to go like that than sideways. Different people have different ways of doing that. I've seen people do it both ways. And again, these are very sharp, very sturdy, and they'll hold up a long time as long as you don't abuse them and try to cut spring wire or very heavy wire that they're not made to cut. One of the things that you're often doing is trying to strip tiny little pieces of wire like this. And these are from uh, leftover pieces from decoders. And the, the, the wire that they're using now is very, very small. I'm not sure what this is, but it's very tiny, probably 28 gauge. This one's a little bit heavier wire. Now, what this is, this is a fine uh, wire stripper. And you can see it's got two notches right here in the blade where you can set it for different thicknesses of wire. And then it's got this little thumb wheel right here. You can release it there, and then you can set this for different depths so that you can cut or strip different sizes of wire. So what I'm doing is just bringing that out and the wire opening here is getting smaller. So at that point, let's see how that is. So you can set that and then tighten up this little set screw here. That's going to hold it for you that way until you reset it for some other thickness. So then we can just pop that in there and, oh, I didn't do it enough. We'll cut it down just a little bit smaller and then give it a try. Uh, almost. It almost came off that time. So let me do it a little bit tighter and we'll see if that's going to do it. Okay. So, you can get it down there. It takes trial and error to do it, but you'll get it down there to where you get a good clean strip without cutting into any of your wire strands. And that's very important because if you start cutting into any of these strands, it's going to weaken your wire there, your wire connection. So, and you can see it's got, it, it'll work with this much, much finer one. Let me cut that down a little bit more. and see if I can get that to strip. There we go. Got that right off of there without any problems at all. So we've got a nice 
a clean strip here on the end of this very fine wire. And so if you're going to be doing a lot of work with decoder installations and with other fine wire type installations, then this set of fine wire strippers is something that I think you'll find very useful. Then we have this one here. This is the big heavy duty bus, power bus stripper. And this has a lot of settings on it, but let me show you how it works right off. Let's try it first with uh, some stranded 14 gauge wire. And this, it says on here that it'll work with gauges 10 through 24. So quite a wide range. Okay, so all you have to do is right here, this is a depth gauge. And it's got a little gradation scale right here behind it. And you can push that in. It starts at a quarter of an inch and then it's got oh, a half inch setting and a three quarter inch setting. So let's set it back to a half inch roughly. And I'll show you what that does. So then I'll put the wire into the jaws and it comes down, grips it on this side, and then it's gonna pull that wire right off of there and give you about a half inch of clean copper wire exposed there at the end. Now, what else can you do with that? Well, what if you've cut that and you don't want it cut? Well, it's got a built-in wire cutter to remove it like that, get that out of the way. And then, let's say you want to do a splice about this far in, or at any point on a wire uh, under your layout. Well, you just pop that in there and give it a pull, and it's gonna expose a section of copper wire for you so that you can then attach a wire to it, you can solder a wire to it, splice it on there, and you're good to go at that point. So that makes it a lot easier when you're working with uh, bus wires and you need to splice a wire into a bus run. So that's one thing that you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off again. It's nice and handy to have this built-in cutter here. Like that, get that out of the way. Okay, let's take a look at, at this aspect. So. It can do insulated crimpers at 10 through 22, or non-insulated crimp joints at 10 through 12 and 14 through 22. So you have a lot of flexibility in here. So you've got a crimper, you've got a cutter, you've got a stripper, and then you've got a uh, stripper for somewhere in the middle of a run of wire. So all of these, this is a very heavy duty tool, and I, uh, I used it, this is a 14 gauge wire. This is a piece, I think, of 12 gauge. So let's see if it'll cut that there, cut right through it, and we'll see how well it strips the end of it. Okay, stripped it right off without any problem. So you can go down, it says down to a 10 gauge wire with that. So that gives you a lot of uh, capabilities, uh, 10 through 24, and for you metric guys, that's 0.2 to 6.0. So. It's gonna cover a lot of your basic wiring capabilities. And this is something I've wanted to have for years, but I never have found one that was within my price range and that offered all of these different capabilities. So I suggest you take a look at this one. Uh, it's probably something that you might wanna have on hand once you start doing a lot of wiring on your model railroad. People are always asking me what power supply I use, where can they get a good power supply, and very often I just have to tell them, well, check eBay, check Amazon, uh, check my various uh, suppliers of electronic parts that carry these various uh, supplies. Now this one is one that is DCC Concepts. It is their Cobalt Premium 18 volt 5 amp power supply. So it is a good stable power supply. It's going to give you 18 volts at 5 amps, so it's gonna power most of your boosters and command stations that you're going to see for your typical use because they're typically uh, somewhere around 5 amps. So this one, it comes with the US cord for you, and I'm gonna plug that in here, and then we can plug it into the, uh, to the unit, and you can see we've got a green LED light here, pilot light, to let you know that it's on and working. And it comes with a built-in barrel plug connector here on one end, and of course, as I showed you, it has the US cord here for use in the US. 
They also produce a UK version with a uh, 240 volt plug, a U European version with a 220 volt plug, and an Australian version with a 240 volt plug. So four different options. So make sure that when you order one that you get the correct power supply for your country. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. But let me point out one thing for the future that I've got coming. Uh, the folks at Wi-Fi Tracks have shipped me one of their Wi-Fi Tracks WFD30 interfaces. And what these are, they are a Wi-Fi interface device for use with NCE DCC systems. So in a few weeks, we'll be taking a look at how you can use your iPhone, your Android phone, your TCS Wi-Fi throttles, and any other Wi-Fi capable device or throttle with your NCE DCC systems to control your locomotives and various accessories on your model railroad. So that's something we'll be looking at probably in maybe two or three weeks, depending on how, uh, how complicated it gets, setting it up and checking out all of the various functions. That's it for now. Have a great weekend, have a great week, and I'll see you here again with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.